Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to learn the pronunciation of towns and cities in England but we're going to focus on the suffixes of those towns and cities. Originally, hundreds of years ago, these suffixes on the end of a place name would have meant something and if we know that suffix we can understand what that town or city was back then before it grew big. So I find it interesting just to know what these suffixes mean. It's also useful so we can pronounce the place names in England a lot more easily and say them the right way. And it's also an interesting lesson if you've ever looked at a map of England and seen all these funny place names that often we don't pronounce in the way that you'd expect. So we're going to see places like that in this lesson. Let's start here with the suffix ham. When we actually say it in the place name, it becomes um, um. Originally, in place names, that part meant settlement. And it's old that it comes from Anglo-Saxon. So first of all, we've got Birmingham, Birmingham. Many people, many Americans say Birmingham. Whereas anyone from England will say Birmingham or someone actually from there would say something like Birmingham. But I'm from the south of England and from London and we just say Birmingham. Next, we've got Nottingham. Then Tottenham, Tottenham. What surprises us about the pronunciation of Tottenham is that it's not three syllables. You might expect Tottenham. It's not that, we say Tottenham. And if you're into football, you might have heard of Tottenham Hotspur, one of the big English football teams. Next, we've got Durham. You might expect this word to be more like Durham because we see the letter U and R and we might think, oh, it's maybe similar to the word purple or some different pronunciation. We don't expect the uh vowel there. So we say Durham, Durham. Next, we have Wrexham. Uh, in Wrexham, well, there's nothing really to say that's special about Wrexham except we spell it with a W and we just, we just say an R. And here we have an exception. These are all um, but this one is actually ham. West Ham. West Ham is another football club in London. The reason we say ham here and not Westham is because it's two separate words. The ham stands powerfully and stressed by itself. Next, let's look at Bury. There's two ways to pronounce the endings of Bury places. We can say Bury or Brie. So here is Canterbury. I went to university in Canterbury. I say it like that with three syllables, but some people might say Canterbury, Canterbury. I think the most common pronunciation is just with the three syllables, Canterbury. Next, there's two pronunciations of this place and people disagree about which one is right and which one is wrong. If you look at the word and you read the word, you'd think, yeah, that place is Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, with the long oo, the oo vowel, Shrewsbury. But actually many people say Shrewsbury, oh, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. And this place name, I believe the distinction about which one's correct 
has something to do with whether you're whether you're posh. If you're posh, supposedly you say Shrewsbury. I live in Shrewsbury. Let me know in the comments if you live in Shrewsbury. And the last example of this suffix, we've got Glastonbury. Glastonbury. And I believe in a West Country accent, people might say Glastonbury. Glastonbury. They'll say it with four syllables. So, for, but for me, the most natural pronunciation is Glastonbury. Next, let's look at places with which at the end. Which means place and this comes from Latin. Ipswich, Norwich, Ipswich, Norwich. What's interesting about those two words that have the which ending is we see how it depends on the sounds at the start of the word, how we say which, because it actually changes. Here we've got which, and here we've got ridge. They're spelt the same, but one came, comes out with the j sound, and one comes out with the ch sound. Ipswich, Norridge, spelt the same, sound different. Another thing is that in Ipswich, we hear the W, but we don't say Norwich. In Norwich, there is no W, the sound disappears. I think it's because the tongue flows much more easily if we just say Norwich and we don't add that W because it's extra tongue movements. And it's probably something that changed over hundreds of years because it was easier to say it that way. The next suff uh, suffix we have is mouth, which means the mouth of, the, of a river, which is where, the river, where a river meets the sea. That comes from Middle English. But we change the way we say the word mouth when it's at the end of the word when it's at the end of the place name, it sounds different to how you would expect. We have Plymouth, Bournemouth, Yarmouth. So instead of mouth, it becomes muth. We have the schwa there. So the sound of that syllable is, you could say shorter and you could also say unstressed. Next example, is worth. Worth means enclosure. Enclosure means a, a place with walls around, a fence or hedges where the animals used to graze and eat their food. And it comes from Old English. Worth becomes two pronunciations, either worth similar to muth or worth, but not a long er, uh, just a wuth. Tamworth, Farnworth, Bedworth, first pronunciation, wuth. Second pronunciation now, Tamworth, Farnworth, Bedworth. Slightly different, depends who you ask for those three places. Next, we've got more examples. Now we have Sesta. Sesta comes from Roman, Latin, I guess. And it comes from the word castrum, which means like castle and means like fort in English. We have Leicester, Leicester. When we look at that word, the first guess would be Leicester, something like that. But actually it's only two syllables and we simply say Leicester. So it's much easier to pronounce than it is to spell that word. Next we have 
Worcester. Worcester. And there's a famous sauce from this place. We call it Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. Or some people say Worcestershire sauce. Two ways to pronounce that sauce. Next, we have probably the hardest one to pronounce in the whole lesson because it sounds very different to, we'd ex to how we'd expect. And also, even if you know how to read IPA, it comes out as quite a long word. So let's try together. We say Sirencester, Sirencester. Looks like, what does it look like? Sirencester? I don't know, but we say Sirencester. And locals of the place, some of them will say sister, sister, just similar to sister. I, I suppose that's because they don't want to say the big long word every time they mention the name of their town. So they shorten it. But if I were to go there, I would say Sirencester. Next, we have the suffix field. Field means open, open land, grass area, comes from Old English. We have Sheffield, Huddersfield and Litchfield. Let's look at the IPA for Litchfield because this phoneme here is ch, ch. That can be confusing if you don't know how to read the IPA in red properly. Lich field. There's no, it's not lit. There's no T there by itself. It's lich field. Moving on to pool suffix. Pool originally means harbour and comes from Old English. The most famous pool place is Liverpool. Liverpool. If you're from there, you'll say Liverpool and the pitch rises quite a lot at the end. But in my southern English pronunciation, you could even say that this vowel is shortened and it sounds more like Liverpool, Liverpool. Same vowel, but not so long sounding. And the next example is Blackpool, Blackpool. They're famous for having a tower and it's by the sea and you can go there for holidays and it's a British seaside town. That's what they're famous for. I've never been personally. Next, we have the Ford suffix. This means crossing, comes from Old English. So we have Watford, Dartford and Guildford. Watford, it's interesting to know now that it means crossing. Watford, a lot of people consider to be the edge of London. This is not true in a geographical sense, but people say that after Watford, you go to the north of England. It's not true geographically. So we can imagine it like a crossing in, in that sense. Also, Dartford, Dartford has a tunnel. There, so in, you can cross from one side of the river to the other in Dartford. Guildford, I don't, I don't know what's cross, crossing about that place, but I do know that when we say the word Guildford, we don't hear the D, we just hear Guildford. And importantly, we don't say Ford, what Ford? We have a schwa, so it just becomes food. Next, we have places with the ing suffix. Ing means people of. So there's a place and there are people from that place. That's what the ing means. 
So these places are named after the people from there. Kind of backwards naming to most towns. And that comes from Old English. We have, guess how you say this one? Some of you will have got it right, some wrong. This one is not reading, as in reading a book. This one is just reading, reading. This one is barking, barking. When I hear that place name, I always think of the expression barking mad, someone who's crazy, barking. And we have dorking, dorking. And lastly, uh, a shire is not a town or a city, but I think many of you have probably heard of English place names with a shire on the end. And what's important to know about those places is that they are counties. Counties are large areas, similar to regions in a way, but areas where they have the same local government. So they can be quite big areas. And often they're in, inside the county, there's the county name like Bedfordshire, but then there's also a place without the shear on it. So there's a place called Bedford and there's also a bigger county called Bedfordshire. And many of the shears are like that. Another example is Leicestershire. A story about Bedfordshire is that um, I have a local corner shop when I'm in London. This is my my mum's house. It's not I'm not living in that area all the time, and it's not it's not a posh area. It's a it's a how do I describe it? a local area, a place where people live. It's nothing fancy. And our local corner shop, I think it's run by Pakistani guys or something like that. And one day I went in there and the man said to me, uh, are, you, are you from around here? And I was just, I was just buying something. I was like, uh, yeah, kinda. And he said, oh, I thought you were from Bedfordshire. <laughs> and that's a that's funny because in his mind at least, and maybe it's true, I'm not sure, Bedford, Bedfordshire is a very posh place. So he was like saying, why are, you, why are you coming in my shop kind of thing? I haven't seen you before. Uh, you don't look like you're, you're from here. But anyway, a, a point about pronunciation, he, not speaking English as a native language, said Bedfordshire, he said like Bedfordshire, something like that, where there are two pronunciations of the shear. It's sha or shear, not Bedfordshire, like it's not really extra on the end. So you have to stick, you have to stick to one or the other pronunciations. Oxfordshire or Oxfordshire. I'm from Oxfordshire. Or you say Gloucestershire or Gloucestershire. And maybe it depends on who you ask or maybe it depends on where you're from in the country. But in my, my natural pronunciation, if I were to say these places, I would feel most comfortable saying Shear, Bedfordshire, Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire. And in my intuitive feeling about it, to say sha is a bit more posh. So if you said Bedfordshire or Oxfordshire or Gloucestershire, that's like you're a very posh person in my intuitive understanding. So thank you for learning all the suffixes with me and see you again soon. Bye.